self-expression, I suppose. That's been my, been my struggle to, to find the right words for things all my life. To say yes. To say yes, the explosion of leaf into light. Some things grow over the edges of explanation and there is no reading between lines because there are no longer any lines and no more need for reading. To find My name's Mark Yo. I'm 74. Surprised to be here. When I was uh, about five, we had a ne fellow next door who was a poet and he used to write poems for me and, and make them into paper airplanes and, and, and throw them over the hedge between our houses. So I thought everybody did it. You know, I wrote poems back and made them into paper airplanes and threw them over the hedge and, and, uh, and it felt really good to do. My, my first set of jobs, I was an academic. I, I taught English literature at, at University of Western Ontario for a number of years. Um, I was working on a PhD there, and I chose not to submit my thesis. I decided late in the game that I didn't want to be one of the boys, and I never regretted making that decision. So I worked with youth programs, which was really wonderful. The youth training scheme I worked for specialized in taking kids that had, had learning disabilities. We saw a lot of kids at 16 who couldn't read and write, they, their kids used to come to us with, with their name and address on cards because they couldn't write their names. Things like that are, are, are um, almost impossible for people to get past if they, don't have a, if they don't have a support system. The social structures that we've created in, in so many ways do that. They, they lump people into a, um, into a basket and, and try to keep them there. There are no coasts or foothills here, nothing to climb, nothing to cling to or hide behind, unless we choose to be invisible, not to be known. So I was in so my, well into my 20s really before I, I began to have relationships with, with women. And one of my first relationships was with a woman who was married. It was a deep dark secret. Nobody knew about it, so coming out wasn't something that I was able to do, except in an extremely limited way. I left that relationship when I was in my late 20s and I moved to England. We have been waiting all our lives for this unwinding of rooftop and rafter, of the tough fabric and fabrication we put on out of the womb but we cannot be satisfied with less. London had a really, really active queer culture. Because it's such a large city, you could live inside of that subculture and hardly ever have to step outside it. It was, it was wonderful in a, in a community where being gay was not only acceptable, but something that was celebrated. There's a kind of energy when you, when you get a lot of people with a perspective on things together, uh, and you can, you can live your life inside that, that group. And uh, I'd never experienced anything like that before. I recently looked a kid that I worked with up on Facebook. I gotta tell you how pleased I was. He's writing poetry, he's gay, he's very out, uh, very involved with arts and creative things, so he's found the stuff that really works for him. But we cannot be satisfied with less, not satisfied with a cold and singular hole in the dumb earth for each of us, when we might untomb each other with a word, bear down, give birth to a common language, say yes.
Ask me another. <laughs>